In honor of National Handwriting Day, we're asking the question, does handwriting matter? And joining us from Harding University in Searcy, Arkansas, is the Associate Dean and Professor of Education, Dr. Clara Carroll. She's joining us via Skype. Thanks so much for hanging out with us. Oh, you're welcome. Well, I have to tell Tim here, this is Dr. Carroll, one of my very favorite professors um, in the education department there at Harding University. And is this where you went to school? That's where I went to school. I did not know this. Back in the day. So luckily, she um, is helping us out with National Handwriting Day because we're kind of talking about um, the, the advantages of still using print versus maybe going a traditional route with, or non-traditional route with voice to text. Do you have any thoughts on that? <laughs> well, you know, whenever I was teaching elementary school, cursive was very important. But what we've seen is technology is taking the place of a lot of the needs for different, to have different kinds of handwriting skills. You know, when the Common Core State Standards came out, it was not written into those standards. So teachers thought they couldn't teach cursive. But in reality, it was meant to to be up to the teachers, whether or not they taught print and cursive. Um, personally, I like cursive, but I'm of the old school where I think we can do it all. We can do technology and cursive. I guess my question at this point with technology where it is, um, what are the advantages or, or what is the importance of cursive in our culture now? Because I can't, other than signing my name, I don't think I've used it in probably a decade and a half. Well, some of the uh, cognitive neuroscientists say that our brain does different things when we print the old ball and stick printing and when we do cursive and when we type keyboard text. So we're using different parts of our brain to do all three of those things. That's why I think it's a good balance for our brain development to, um, to have all of those experiences. And there is a correlation between you know, printing and learning how to print with other things down the road with other skills, right? It's like, like you mentioned, a brain thing. Right. And you know, Steve Jobs, before he ever got into technology, he was an accomplished calligraphist. And that is why we have so many fonts now in technology, because he saw the great need to be able to have this type of cursive handwriting skill. But we do know that it also speeds up our thought pattern when we're writing in cursive rather than just typing. It also allows us to read things like the Declaration of Independence when we're in Washington, D.C. Yeah. Can't, can't we just say, Alexa, read me the Declaration of Independence? <laughs> yes, you can do that, too. <laughs> <laughs> well, I can remember um, a class that I took there at Harding, um, one of my teaching classes, and we actually had to do one of the handwriting workbooks so that we would know how to teach handwriting. Do they do that anymore? Well, you know, since the Common Core came out, a lot of school districts are being mandated by the state departments of education to uh, incorporate cursive again. So yes, to answer your question, and Arkansas is one of those states that a couple of years ago, the legislators mandated that beginning in second grade, cursive is back in the curriculum. Ah. Now, obviously we can't control necessarily what schools do, but w would you have any recommendations for us adults who uh, may not be using this as much as we should on ways to incorporate handwriting in our daily lives? Well, whenever you take a short note, just do it in cursive and you'll find that it's a lot faster than using the traditional print ball and stick. However, like you said, you can have uh, technology devices do it for you just by speaking. Yeah, I know Brock, when he was in preschool, they were teaching the handwriting without tears. He yes. nailed it. Then he goes to kindergarten and they revert back to the Danielian. And then that was like, oh, nuts. Then he goes to first grade and they're back to handwriting without tears. And needless to say, his handwriting today is in the pits. It's terrible. But now they don't teach it past fourth grade um, in his school district. So I don't even know what to do with him. So I looked up on um, the SREB, that's the Southern Region for Educational Board, and they keep up with what's going on in each state. Illinois is not, at least as of when this was published, did not have a mandate on cursive handwriting. But there are a number of school uh, states that do mandate the cursive handwriting. But like you said, it's really the consistency in a school district. So they're not having to go back and forth and learning different styles from one grade to another. 
Yeah. Well, I know if I had to write in cursive with any sort of frequency, there would be many tears. So uh, let's hope that doesn't have to happen anytime soon. Oh, my goodness. So your advice, stick to the cursive. Keep it alive. Keep it alive. Yes, Please. keep it alive. Oh. All right. Thank you for your time. It's nice to meet you. And uh, you have to come visit us in studio sometime. Yes. Heather would love that. Oh. Good to see you. Heather, I you want to give you too. a big hug. I do too. We're going to take a selfie here after this, so don't <laughs> hang up, okay? Okay. <laughs>